Hello and welcome everyone. It's my favorite time of the week where we get to come together as a community and do a live stream. Today we're going to be creating farm encounters with the fantasy battle map. So welcome everybody. We're going to do farm encounters with the fantasy battle map style. There's only really one announcement that I have to make. If you go up to the top right corner and you'll see that notification bell, you hover over it'll see, see what's new. And you'll notice that we got some new art, the modular, modular buildings, and more. Uh, basically, it's what watercolor cities. With the modular buildings, you can kind of create your own buildings now. That way you can make your cities have a little more custom structures instead of just what's out of the box. And there's some additional things, uh, and additional stuff in the packs here. Some of the ones that are going to be really useful are going to be like these docks and those tree clusters that will just make things a lot easier for making your forest instead of doing the density brush. So those tree clusters will be really helpful. If you're not certain like what you can make uh, with those modular buildings, I made some buildings as examples. So there's like a whole host of things, mostly larger structures that you can create for your cities. And this is also available on my profile if you want to clone and edit these and kind of see how I put them together. So you can kind of make your own. And we're also doing a stream next week on how to create stuff like that. So if anyone has any suggestions uh, for things that they want to see us make in next week's stream with this uh, Watercolor Sillies modular pack, please let us know in the chat or if you're watching on YouTube in the comments. Okay, you're going to want to clone and edit uh, this map to follow along in today's stream. That link is available in the chat if you're watching live on YouTube, of course, in the video description. Now, farm maps are going to be pretty stock. You're going to see them in almost every campaign. Um, and there's a whole, whole bunch of different reasons uh, that a whole different reasons why you would use a farm encounter and there's a lot of interesting things you can do with farm encounters so we'll talk a little about some fun things that you can do to kind of spice up that encounter let's just go first go over kind of the functional part uh, this kind of helps when putting together your map i'm going to go ahead and delete the title here and we're going to go over the guide that i've created here with the fantasy regional style hey first time chatter welcome that you are here by the way awesome so glad to see new faces i love that so we're going to be creating a farm with the fantasy battle map style. I've created this diagram or guide with the fantasy regional HD style. Uh, you, of course, if you're gonna use a guide, you can use images that you see on Google Images or Pinterest or whatever. It's always nice to have some kind of visual reference that you can use. Just don't copy it verbatim, obviously. Don't copy it perfectly. Just draw, glean different ideas from the reference images instead of just copying them. So let's just kind of quickly go over what, we, what you're kind of seeing here on the map, one of the first things that you have to ask yourself is what kind of farm are you making? So in a farm can have a couple things. Hey, Planet Smleaf, glad another, glad that you're here. Another new chatter, super awesome. Yes, we have a Twitch account. We do streams every Wednesday, 3 p.m. PST. So welcome, glad that you're here. So the first question you ask yourself, of course, is what kind of farm are we making? And there are farms can have multiple things. It can grow crops. You can see there's some crops here and the crops can vary between lots of different ones. It could be rice, corn, it could be wheat. In this stream, we're going to go with wheat. If it's not yielding a crop, then you can have livestock. Let's say cows, sheep, pigs, chicken, horses, whatever it is, the, that would pretty much take up your crop. So if you were doing, a lot of farm for livestock like cows, those crops would be replaced by fields for the cows or whatever livestock to graze, of course. But you'd probably want some crops as well because horses need to eat and so do the livestock need to eat. Now, all farms are going to require a water source, just really any settlement of any kind. You can apply this to any settlement, but with a farm, obviously, you're going to need access to water. So you notice that we have a creek right here that runs through the property and that creek is going to, some of that water is gonna be diverted through this irrigation channel. It's gonna go across the property and allow water to reach those crops or if it was cattle grazing fields so that they have a place to go and kind of drink some water. So it doesn't matter what kind of farm it is, there's gotta be some kind of water source so that crops can grow, that you, that the farmers, farmers, 
the, the workers can all get access to water and of course for livestock to drink. So water is an absolute must. And then let's go over the other components. Now when you're thinking about what kind of structures to place on your farm, it depends what kind of farm it is, right? So we've got crops, we're doing wheat. I'm also gonna include a chicken coop because hey, you're gonna need eggs if you wanna make bread from wheat if you want to make bread or grain, you're going to need chicken coop, you're going to need eggs. So I'm throwing in a chicken coop. Of course, we're going to need a windmill to process the wheat to create grain. We're going to have a barn for our horses or whatever livestock might be there. So the stables will likely be in there as well. And of course, there has to be a farmhouse. The people who are working on the farm need a place to live. And there's going to be a little vegetable garden right here as well that we're going to put in. The last thing I want to mention about layout or just kind of the overall layout is to talk about access. And I talk about this a lot, but it's this flow of traffic. When you're doing your layout, it's nice to know the different pathways and access. So what you have first is this main road that leads into what's called the cart circle, or you can call it like a traffic circle. It's just so allow carts to kind of go around the tree and then reach the different access points, whether it's the chicken coop, the farmhouse, the barn, that footbridge that goes over the creek. So that's what that cart circle is there for. So it's gonna allow some nice access to each structure around that cart circle. I also wanna mention one thing, also this cattle bridge right here. The cattle bridge isn't much different from any other kind of bridge. It's just a certain bridge that goes over an irrigation canal or ditch. And it's what you would expect. It allows for livestock or pedestrians or vehicles like carts to go over safely over that ditch or irrigation channel. Let's go ahead and remove this and we'll go ahead and go with the overall farm layout. So let me go ahead and remove the scene. Now one of the hardest parts that people might struggle with is translating the kind of isometric or pseudo isometric scene or image that you're using as a reference into the top down perspective. It can be kind of confusing, like how do I translate that, translate that scene to that top down? And you know, the best place to start is with your bodies of water first. Always start with your bodies of water. That way you have um, the water in relation to where everything else is. So water is like one of the largest things that you're probably gonna find on the map. So you're gonna fill the entire map with the add mode of the mask tool so that everything is made with the FG, okay? Then you're gonna just go over, you're gonna create your layout, you know, with the path tool. What's really great about the path tool is even if you don't have a, a, a pen, you can still use the segment section to kind of create this kind of way of putting together your layout. So even if you don't have a pen, it's okay. Do segments and then just do single clicks and to get that more circular or more rounded shape that you're looking for. So if you're confused, like, well, how did you get that such a good curve? Well, I am using a pen, but you don't need a pen to do this kind of stuff. You can totally use a mouse, provided that you just do that segment section. All right, so like I said, you're gonna start with the add mode of the mask tool, and then you're gonna carve out with the subtract mode of the mask tool, the water areas. So once you've kind of created your layout, you'll go ahead and just with, go ahead and subtract with a circular brush all the parts that are gonna be water. And then just right away, just go ahead and paint that part, that BG layer with the water texture of your choice. Once you've done water, then you can start to put in some of the largest structures or the largest parts on the map. Sometimes it's really confusing on where to, like the overall operation. If you start with the largest things on the map first, that way you'll have a better idea of the relation to other buildings and the space that you'll need. Of course, you're gonna to wanna to obviously turn on the grid as well, because the grid will be extremely helpful. Notice that my grid does line up. Notice that my layout does line up for the most part with the grid. So that way you can use the grid to help you with scale like how big is this? Is this wheelbarrow too big? Why is this a 17 foot wheel, wheelbarrow? I don't understand. Why is this a 20 foot door? <laughs> okay, so it, having that grid to help you is really, really useful. And the standard is five square feet per, per grid. And it's also gonna help you with 
the access thing. So you don't know if you have enough room. So when people going on the traffic circle, notice that there's tons of space in between the buildings and the cart circle, and none of the traffic is gonna be obstructed. So there's plenty of room for your players to move around in the open. There's tons of room for the farmers to move their equipment and everything else. So that way there's no kind of, kind of uh, mess. So it's important to have the access and that kind of flow of traffic. Now I've incorporated everything onto from that diagram. I've got my crops, got the irrigation channel, the cattle bridge, which is going to go over that irrigation. You're going to have that chicken coop where we're going to have chickens, the windmill and the, and the attached barn, and then the farmhouse with that vegetable garden. Okay, let's go ahead and start with that next part. I'm going to go ahead and just bring the opacity down on this farm layout real quick. Kind of bring it down. I want you just so you can kind of see, see the diagram and then see how it was put together. Remember I mentioned fill the entire thing with the add mode of the mask tool. And then I also took the BG or the subtract mode of the mask tool and then kind of carved out my water. That's super important. And I've already laid down all the textures, but I'll explain how I do texturing a little bit later in the stream, okay? Now, whenever you're getting started, after you've done all that, all this stuff you've kind of put down, you've done with the layout, and everything, and all the, the land and the water has been added, you can start with what I like to do is like since you started with the water first, any details that are associated with the water, like the footbridge, the retaining wall, the cattle bridge, all those things, just start making those things right away. Hey, the Butcher141, first time chatter, so glad that you are here. Wonderful. I love new faces. Okay. So let's go ahead and do the water bits. Let's go do the water bits. Let's turn that farm layout all the way to zero so it doesn't kind of obstruct the view. And let's go hit up with the watery bits. First thing is I'm going to put down some waterfalls. And the reason why I'm putting down waterfalls is for a very specific reason. For the water, for the water to flow fast enough, to go through this irrigation canal and go all the way down to the end, what happens is, is that you need to pick up that speed. And the way to do that is to build a series of kind of like dams or lifts in the, in the creek so that the water falls. And those waterfalls will pick up the speed of the water and allow that water to flow all the way down the irrigation canal. And I've also put, notice that I've also put some rocks on this either side of your waterfalls. That will kind of help to create this illusion of depth with your waterfall. That's kind of nice because sometimes when you just put a waterfall on there without those rocks, it just doesn't look quite as realistic. So throwing some rocks on either side of your waterfall is extremely helpful. Okay, let's also include our bridge retaining wall. And the bridge, I'm going to undo that real quick. The bridge retaining wall. And that is going to be basically a retaining wall that's going to kind of keep the land beneath the footbridge from collapsing. That's why that retaining wall is there. A retaining wall is to basically help, help from any kind of land from falling off or getting ruined by erosion from water damage. All right, let's go find that footbridge. The footbridge is really, really, really easy to make. All I did was use a long, one long dock and then two of those rope fences on either side to act as kind of like a secure railing. And then I used clipping mass. You'll kind of notice right here that some of the land kind of overlaps the dock or the, that dock piece. I used a clipping mask so that some of the texture on the FG would kind of carry over onto the stamp, making it look like there's been some, like people have been walking over it. So clipping masks are really, really nice. Clipping masks with a soft edge so it blends in really nice. So remember, you're, once you've, you just want to do all the parts that are related to the water. Because it's that first thing, you might as well continue on with the stamps. Okay, let's also do one more, I think, I believe, is going to be that cattle bridge. Let's go find that cattle bridge. I'm going to go ahead and turn that on. The same technique that I used with that footbridge, you'll notice that I used clipping masks 
I used clipping masks right here as well so that the texture would carry on. So clipping masks are absolutely helpful. Clipping masks are basically like a movable FG layer. Whatever is on the FG layer is going to show up. We have a stream on clicking mat on click, <clears throat> excuse me, on clipping masks. And you can go ahead and check that out. Just type in how to or understanding clipping masks on our channel on YouTube and you'll absolutely find it. But basically it's just a movable FG and it's very helpful for hiding shadows or doing things like this, putting it over this dock right here to create this effect of dirt and use on top of it. And I did the same thing over here as well. Notice here that some of that wall is covered up a little bit by some of the FG layer. Those are also clipping masks. So they're really, 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 really helpful. So I totally recommend you use them. Now that the water is completed, you can go on to that next step, which is kind of making terrain. And you notice here that I have put down the terrain. If you're not sure what these stamps are right here, these are just called hills right here. They're excellent hills. They're not like a cliff where they're a little bit more with a lot of contrast. These hills kind of blend in better with the FG layer, with the environment. They also have clipping masks on them, meaning that whatever, when you place that stamp down, it's going to pick up whatever textures on the FG layer. You know, you can turn off the clipping mask with a little toggle, just select it and then let it show up in that menu on the left side. And it should be a little toggle button to turn off the clipping masks. I don't recommend turning them off. Keep them on because it will pick up whatever texture is on that FG layer, allowing it to blend in better. So I've put hills right here for a particular purpose. That's where the windmill is going to be. So creating some higher elevations so that the windmill is higher up, exposing the sails of the windmill higher up, allowing them to get more wind. Okay, so it makes kind of makes sense to put the windmill on a higher elevation. Okay, speaking of windmills, let's go ahead and we've done, we've added that terrain. You can see the terrain there. Let's do the next kind of large thing, which is going to be that cart circle because it's pretty big and it takes up a huge portion of this over here. And with it, I just do, I have a, I have a technique that I use that I didn't come up with myself, so I can't take credit for it. But basically you take a stump and then you're going to take a tree stamp. Make it as big or as small as you want. Drop the brightness all the way to zero so it's pure black. And then drop the opacity to about 25%. And what we'll do is, is that you'll be able to see beneath the tree, instead of the foliage getting in the way of your player's movements and you can't see underneath the tree, this technique of using a stump and then a tree allows you to kind of see the foliage still but also see your players moving around. These maps take um, about four or five days worth of prep work to put together because I have to do all the grouping and labeling and putting everything together and prepping and the stories. So they take some time. If it was just me working on them without all this prep work, it probably would not take more than about four or five hours. Okay, and I've also made it clear what kind of tree this is by adding apples on the ground and then a sub a basket full of apples as well. So this kind of helps to indicate what kind of tree it is. So now the farmers can make apple pies or whatever they want with the apples, apple sauce, apple cider, whatever it is they want. And notice too how the placement of everything, notice how the stump, the large portion of the stump is in the center of that cell right there, which allows which allows to make movement so much easier. So players can walk around here like this without any question whether or not, well, am I, is that accessible or it's not, or is it not? So it makes it rather clear that if you place things well within or within the boxes, it should look, it should work so much easier. All right, let's go ahead and zoom out real quick. We have a lot to cover. Let's go ahead and cover some structures. Let's start with the most iconic one, because this is a, a wheat farm, the most iconic thing you're going to find on a wheat farm is likely going to be the windmill. That's which processes the wheat. So let's go ahead and open up that windmill. As always, you start with walls first. Let me go turn on that diagram so you can kind of see that everything is kind of lined up properly. Otherwise, that's, let me find that farm layout. And we're going to turn the opacity on a little bit so you can kind of see it. Notice carefully that the walls are lined up with the diagram or the layout. 
it's always nice to have these layouts. So that way it's so much easier because it's more difficult to put everything together without some kind of floor plan to help you figure out where things are. It doesn't have to follow the plan floor plan perfectly, but at least you won't be wondering like, should I move it over to here? Should I place it here? If you already have the placement and the location of these structures, it'll be less work for you. It'll go so much quicker when placing down your walls. Okay, let's go ahead and turn off that. Turn off the layout. Now that you kind of know what I'm what I'm talking about, everything's kind of lined up. After you've done your walls, the next thing, so when you start with a room is an order of operation when you're making a structure. You start with the outer or exterior walls first. Okay, and making this part, we don't have a room tool yet, but believe me, when we do, it'll make making rooms so much easier. In the meantime, it's a little bit of wall Tetris, just kind of rotating and then connecting the wall pieces together. Copying and pasting is the greatest trick to kind of getting it done quickly. It's, it is slightly time consuming and it can be kind of frustrating, but a room tool is on the way. We're going to get that done and it's going to be so helpful. I'm very excited about it. So you always start with your exterior walls first. And I want to mention something about these walls so you can kind of notice is that you'll notice that there's a section of the wall right here that's a little bit darker. It's meant to represent like a door or a window. Okay, so you're using contrast. It makes it look like that black part is farther down, meaning there's an opening in the wall. Same thing with these windows right here. I've used a dark piece of the same wall, just that little tiny square piece, and I put it, line it up properly, and it kind of looks like the opening of a window. So if you're wondering how is it to do that contrast, that's how you do it. Yes, first time chatter, deputy dog, absolutely, it will be amazing. I'm super stoked. After you've done that, you're going to want to go ahead and do what's called your access point. So it's going to be windows, doors, staircases, all those things. You're going to want to do those. So let's go open up that windmill and get started on that. So you're going to start with your stairs. Let's, let's go with the entrance first. The entrance leads into the leads into the barn area that's on the left there. But I've used a different kind of door, this pirate kind of curved door to kind of give the windmill a different feel. So and it also fits with the kind of curvature of the building. That's why I've chosen this kind of curved door. It kind of makes it look more interesting. The next thing is that you want to create uh, let's take a look here. The because this room is so tight space, you should probably make the the milling um, mechanism or the mill wheel. Let's go ahead and make that right away because when it comes to figuring out the staircases and everything, it's nice to have the largest piece there. So the windmill is super easy to construct. I just took that millstone stamp, took a piece of wood wall and then used a windmill piece. And then I put sails from the ship. And I just HS, I just went ahead and just transformed them a little bit. So it looks like that windmill has some sails on it. So those sails are from the ship pack. And it's really easy to put, put together. Just clone the map and you'll see how I put it together. Now that we know how much room we're working with within the windmill, we can go ahead and turn on the staircases that leads up to it. Remember, this is that access. You go into the mill, go up the stairs. Now you have access to the um, windmill wheel axle. So that way, if any damage is done, you can reach that wheel and it makes combat interesting. You can push people off the staircases. Maybe they get ground up by the windmill or by the grindstone. Maybe you throw them off the staircase and bash their head, whatever. So combat can be more interesting when you add a little bit of height. So that spiral or partial spiral staircase is a great way for your players to interact, have interesting combat, and discover interesting things. Let's go ahead and throw in a loading, do a loading dock. And the loading dock is basically just a place that you go to put the sacks of wheat, the processed wheat, and go ahead and put them on maybe some kind of cart would be here that you would load up that cart, so a loading dock. And there's also access to the loading dock, this ladder right here that goes up from the ground. And then I've got used this nice netting from the ship style as well as the rope. 
and I've made that access to the roof. So you can get up to the roof of the windmill, just climbing up those ropes to get up there. And it's just a nice aesthetic. It looks nice. You should generally throw in one interesting kind of element to every structure to make it pop out. So just one interesting element. It could be a crazy fireplace. It could be a pit. Whatever it is you want to do, there should be one kind of focal point in every structure to make it look unique and interesting. Let's go and throw in that last thing. I believe the last thing would probably be, let me go and turn everything on, would likely be the sacks. Because as you would expect, let me go and turn off that grid. You get the general idea now that you should always use the grid to help you line things up. Notice that there are sacks of grain right here. I've even had one broken open so that you can see what's in it. So clearly grain because it's a wheat farm. And then I'll, I throw in light sources to show an opening. So as you can see here, this is an opening in the windmill. So to show that there is light coming from the outside going inside, I've added a light source that's facing this way. So it looks like the light from the outside is coming in from the outside. So it looks kind of nice having the light source there. The other trick that I also want to mention is, is that whenever you're creating objects, placing objects inside or outside of a building, have the objects inside the building be just slightly darker while objects outside the building be slightly lighter. So that way it gives the illusion that, hey, this building is outside and has more exposure to the light while this while well, objects inside a building because there's less light to the walls and the roofs and everything like that. So just make that a little bit darker. So it's kind of a nice little pro tip there to help you out. Now that you understand the order of operation, I'm gonna go ahead and open up now every building. So just remember the order of operation, you start with your outer walls. If you have any inner walls, you'll add that next, but also throw in your stairs, windows, entrances, doors, that's gonna be that next step. And then from there, you can throw in the largest, the largest things that will be in the room, and then last but not, details. If you're confused on what kind of details to add to a room, it's simply the function of the room that will decide the details. So because this is a windmill, it only makes sense that we would have bags of grain, sacks, things like that to kind of show like, hey, so details are not complicated. As long as you know the function of the room, you won't have too hard a time figuring out the details to put in the room. Let's go ahead and open up the next thing because the barn is attached to the windmill. Let's open up the barn and we are running out of time. So let's move quickly here. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the barn. Remember outer walls first. Let's go ahead and throw in our inner walls. So there's, that's gonna be like stables. That's where your horses are gonna be. So let's throw in the horses. So you have horses in the stable. Notice that there's um, a swing gate on both sides so that that way they can leave to go to either side. And then notice that there are exits to get out of the barn, in and out of the barn. Okay, well, I think the standard is five square feet per, per grid square. That's the standard. Okay. Now, Let's go ahead and throw in the other things. So I'm gonna go and turn everything on so you can kind of see real quick. So just like before, you notice that I put lights. I put lights from the outside going inside, just like I did with that windmill. And of course, all the details, every stream, I gotta throw in a little bit of poo. So some poo there. There's also, also a wheelbarrow there that has a wheelbarrow there that has poo in it, a, a shovel to take care of that. And of course, hay piles, hay bales, and a rake to clean it up. All the things that you would kind of expect inside of a barn. And of course, over on the windmill side of the barn, you're gonna have sacks as you would kind of expect because it's gonna come from the windmill where the processing is. It, this could also be a location in which uh, the wheat is bagged and then stored. Okay, all right. So you get the general formula, the idea, and the order of operation. Let's go ahead and move on to the next one. Let's go ahead and do the farmhouse. Of course, start with the, the walls. And I've already, and there's what's called a half step. I'm not sure, sure if anyone's familiar with a half step, but a half step is basically, as you would expect, just maybe one or two steps that leads up into a more 
just a section that's been raised up inside the house. So this portion of the house is lower, while this portion of the house is just a little bit higher. Again, it's called a half step. And all I did was just use a bench and I transformed the width or the height to make sure it spans the entire thing. And I also dropped the brightness and the saturation so that it's not super bright. I kind of want it to look like it's used a little bit, like people are walking over it. So I've desaturated it a little bit. Now on top of the farmhouse, there's, there's a couple things we're gonna have in here. Let's go ahead and start with, of course, the entrance, the way to get in. I've used four benches or three benches with the luminosity blend mode to make it look like these three steps that kind of go up the side of this slightly elevated part of the hill where that building is. So that's really useful. And I dropped the contrast as well to remove the thicker line work to make it look like it's been muddied and walked over. Let's go ahead and start with the, the law. Let's start with windows. We'll go with windows. Windows allow for access. They allow for light, natural lighting to fill in the area. Let's go ahead and do the largest things. Let's go ahead and open up some stuff here. Let's go do the kitchen. If you're not sure what would go in, well, let's do the fireplace actually, sorry. <laughs> Anything that's attached to the wall you wanna do. So a fireplace, windows, do all that stuff. If you're not sure like what to put in your kitchen, when you're making any kind of house and you're not sure what to put in your kitchen, what really helps is to think about just everything that's on that encounter map. Notice that, remember we talked about wheat to make bread with eggs. So you're noticing that I've got some bread here. I've got some apples from the apple tree, some firewood for the fireplace, a kind of sink for washing dishes. So if you're struggling with the details to put in the kitchen, it has a lot to do with the kind of environment. So again, apple tree, all kinds of fun stuff. So if you ever get confused about details, remember the function of the room and what else is on the map, that will kind of help you out. Let's throw in that dining room table. Notice too that I've got the cabbage here. There's gonna be a, a vegetable garden outside up here with some cabbage. Notice there's some carrots and some eggs from the chicken coop. And let's go ahead and select everything and just turn the opacity all the way up so you can kind of see everything. Let's turn that loft off here, my mistake. We're gonna quickly go over the floor plan of this and then we'll go ahead and move on to the next one. So the entrance is right here, out this door to the vegetable garden. This right here is gonna take you to a loft. Anyone who's a regular of our streams knows I love to make lofts. They're fantastic and they have a lot of use case value. And, there's, and you can also walk up into the kitchen on the half step. Let's go ahead and go over the loft real quick. If you're not sure what a loft is, it's just, it's kind of a second floor that's opened up. It doesn't have complete four walls all the way around it. So some of the downstairs can be seen in the loft. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn on that loft. You want a second floor. The trick to the loft is to make sure that there's a large enough, wide enough opening so that people can walk up. If you were to put put the end of the, the floor right here, this was to be floor from the, the loft, people are gonna hit their head right here. So having an opening right before the staircase makes sense, right? So that way people don't hit their head coming up the stairs. So if you're any, ever struggling with staircases to kind of go upstairs, leave a little bit of room right there for people's heads so they don't hit themselves, okay? Now in the loft is like the sleeping area. And if you're not certain what to put in your loft, since we haven't added a kind of a domicile or a sleeping area, notice that we've got the main bed for the parental units. There's maybe you have three or four children, they're all sharing the same bed. And then to make sure that you know that there's children, we've got books, toys, and things like that. So that way you know what kind of details that you have there. I'm gonna go ahead and turn that loft off. Also notice where the part is, where the loft is, there's this rope fence right here. So what's happening is, is that you can see down into the kitchen from the loft and the heat from the fire can rise up because heat rises. It will heat up that loft so it's nice and warm. So there's that nice functional part. We'll be adding in the fantasy elements after we finish the function part. But start with function first and then move to fantasy. 
Let's go ahead and turn off that loft. So it's just the ground floor is showing. Let's go open up. Let's go do the vegetable garden because let's go do vegetable garden. Let's see here. Oops, my mistake. Where is the vegetable? Let's go ahead and find the vegetable garden. One moment. There you go. Remember, there's that lettuce. You've got some carrots. You've got some herbs and then a naughty little rabbit who's trying to eat some cabbage. Naughty rabbit. Troublemaker, right? <laughs> All right, let's go do the chicken coop. Go ahead and throw that in. And I'm going to go ahead and just open up everything in the chicken coop. Because now you kind of get the order of operation on how everything works. Notice that I've done that same thing with these benches right here kind of leading up that hill, leading into the chicken coop. Uh, notice that the chicken coops are made of sticks, so I put a bundle of sticks here to kind of represent uh, maybe for replacing or making a new chicken coop. Notice the crates with eggs, kind of obvious. It's a chicken coop, right? And then also notice the chicken coops themselves or the chicken baskets or cages here that actually house the chickens and then notice that there's a little bench that i've used to kind of represents a rail going down to outside and a little killing stump shall we say where you go to slaughter the chicken to kind of get your delicious chicken okay all right so now that we've kind of put that together let's go ahead and throw in our vegetation you can throw in vegetation uh, either, you can throw vegetation early on or later. It's really up to you on your preference, but I'll go ahead and throw up some vegetation here. And I've kind of just taken a lot of the grass. And if you're ever kind of confused on how to do vegetation uh, on a map like this, what's really always good is to, is to have to line your roads with some vegetation. That way it will frame your roads and make it look kind of nice. So notice here that I've got some grass right here that frames a little bit of the road. Notice that I've got grass framing around the grassy area of the traffic circle. And then when you're out in the middle of nowhere where there's no kind of road, just make sure that you, when you're doing your clusters, make sure that it's asymmetrical and there's varying sizes and put them in clusters Okay, so doing wild vegetation is making it look like it's wild, not placing them deliberately in the same kind of pattern. Make sure there's varying sizes, very large, very small, and then kind of pepper them around. So sometimes natural vegetation will look too natural or not, not too natural, but look unnatural if you have kind of a pattern to it. So just be sure that you kind of have it look very asymmetrical and kind of scattered to give it a more natural feel to it when you're putting down your vegetation. All right, let's go over kind of the more fantasy kind of part. Oh, so I, let's go ahead and add in actually a couple things. Let's throw in the details on the exterior. Sometimes it's kind of hard to know what kind of details to put in the, in the exterior part. And it just depends on the, fun the proximity to the building and, the and that building's function. So I put that cart out right here, of course, by the loading dock with some with a sack in it. Kind of makes sense. I put a wheelbarrow here. Whenever you're uncertain on what kind of details, you can never go wrong with a default or the stock crates and barrels. Crates and barrels are excellent. You're gonna. It's always the go-to when you don't know what to add. For details, the crate is the the crate and the barrel is the ultimate go-to. I've also put some scarecrows. Hello, first-time chatter. Really glad that you're here, Atlantis the Wolf Shark. Love that name. Notice here that of course I've got this kind of scarecrow here. Of course, kind of makes sense, and a scarecrow here as well. Kind of scare scare them off. I've got some barrels here for detail. More wood over here for the fireplace. And also notice here that the troughs for the, the feeding and the, the uh, water trough is outside of the barn and away from the fecal matter, okay? You don't wanna put the horse, have them eat and drink in the same place they poop and pee, okay? So make sure that your feeding troughs are outside of the barn and that way they're not pooing and peeing in the same place that they're eating and drinking, not good. 
Don't want to think sanitation. Same thing for human beings, right? Don't want to do that. Don't want to foul the nest. Okay. Now let's talk about the fan the fantasy element. Now that you've kind of put down everything, you will go over real quick to kind of the layout. You start with a visual guide. That can be anything. It doesn't matter what it is. It could be um, a scene that you made with the Fantasy Regional HD style. We do have a stream on that. Go check our channel, how to create scenes. So if you want to know how to make these scenes yourself, you totally can. Don't worry, Jay Kurtz, writer. It's all right if you're a little late. We're just glad that you're here. So you'll start with a visual reference to help you out. Then you'll make the top-down layout with the path tool. Make sure you turn the grid on so that you have the layout lined up with the grid. After you've done the layout, just group the whole layout and then drop the opacity down and start with filling the whole screen with the FG layer, then fill in the water or subtract with the subtract mode of the mask tool to fill out the water. Remember what we said earlier, sometimes it's really hard to know where to start. Starting with water is a great start. It doesn't matter if you're by a lake, a river, the ocean, you can start by first making the land and the water. You can fill the entire screen with the FG and then subtract the water bits with the subtract mode of the mask tool. So it's really important. Start with water. Once you've done that, then you can go ahead and fill in all the water stamps. All the stamps are going to be affiliated with the water. That's going to be your foot bridges, retaining walls, waterfalls, the cattle, the cattle uh, bridge. All those things are going to be very, very helpful. So start with that. So water first. From there, you want to start with the largest things that are on the map first. If you start big, Instead of the detail, if you start with the details first, then you have you have all, all this open space and it feels like you haven't accomplished anything. So if you start with the largest things first on the map, you'll feel more accomplished because the map will be more populated with more things. It'll feel like you've done more and you have. So start large and then move your way to smaller things. So in other words, you're going to start with the bare, the basics first, the terrain, the water, and the largest things first, and then move to the smaller things, which is going to be, of course, details, things like that. So start big, then go small. So that way you're not, you don't kind of feel like you're not accomplishing much because it's so easy to work on a map and then you feel like, oh, I don't feel like I got anything done. With structures, remember to start with the walls first, then everything that's attached to the walls, chimneys, stairs, windows, doors, Everything that's associated to the wall, make that next. And of course, that will also help you. If you create the access points, then you know where to place things in the room. So notice here that, you know, if you put the door first to the windmill, then you know where everything else will be. You'll know not to put a staircase in front of the door. You'll be able to put the staircase away from the door leading up to the mechanism for the mill. So it only makes sense to start with windows. After you've done your walls, everything attached to the walls. So do that. After you've done that, start with the, just like with the terrain part and the water part, start with the largest stamps first that will be inside the structure and then move on from there into detail. So if you follow this, if you follow this kind of modus of operation or this mode of operation, it'll be easier for you to just boom, 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 get things done. So start with an order of operation, start from A to Z. Now, once all that fantasy and the function, all that fantasy stuff has, or all the functional stuff has been put together, you can start adding in the fantasy element. What good is a farm if it's just a regular old farm? For your encounter, it's D and D. Add the fantastic. Add the fantasy elements. One thing that you can kind of do to add the fantasy elements is to throw in little surprises here and there. And one thing we can do is we're going to throw in some corpses in the water. So if you zoom in carefully, what I did is I just taken corpses from the gothic horror and then I've changed the blend mode to luminosity so it picks up that water texture beneath it. And then I dropped the contrast to remove some of the harder lines. And it kind of makes them look like these corpses are underwater. And I place them in a way where the players can't miss it. When they cross that footbridge to go across the creek, they're going to see that there are corpses under the water. So that's going to make your players think, whoa, what happened? So many questions. This is where the fantastical element starts to kick in, right? You can think to yourself, now, wait a minute. Where, where, is this the actual farmers? 
Who are the real farmers that live? Who are the people who live here now? Did did the did an intruder show up and murder the farmers and then tried to hide their bodies underneath the creek? Was it something else? Where are these farmers serial killers? Right? I mean, you just don't know. But it, it, with that, adding in that question, that more fantastical element allows an opening for so many different possibilities. What are these corpses? Why are they, they there? Who killed them? Who are they? Why were they killed? All these kind of questions pop up. And so the fantasy element starts to kick in. So throw in things, some kind of fantastic element into the map. So some corpses there are nice. We can also throw in other things too. Um, whenever you're throwing in the fantasy elements, just look at whatever you have on the map. Look at those functional things and add a fantastic element to it. So for instance, we have this giant kind of, of apple tree right here. What happens if there's like an evil, if there's an evil entity that lives within the tree, right? And some maybe a shadow demon or something like that and it's got tendrils coming out of the tree trying to reach up and grab the players maybe the tree virus thingy took over the farmers uh, brains with a virus or something or maybe the evil tree is a result of the corpses being in the creek maybe some maybe the spirits you know were carried along from the the, the people that were murdered in the creek uh, maybe those spirits have inhabited the tree now and the tree is trying to seek out its revenge. It's trying to find some kind of peace. So adding a fantastical element, you can do all kinds of things. You could catch uh, the windmill sail on sails on fire. You could uh, put a giant pit in, in the inside of the house. Like maybe it collapsed and maybe there's a sinkhole there and a creature's coming out. Uh, maybe they're coming out of the vegetable garden. Maybe there's a giant mole person. Okay, so think about all the various things. Just take the functional part and add a fantastic element to it. And that way, it's not just a wheat farm. Again, this is D&D, &D, right? Or whatever your gaming system is. The fantasy element is really, really, really helpful. You don't want it just to be a regular farm. Otherwise, why are you playing it, right? So throw in some deadly, throw in the knives, throw in the blood, throw in the guts, throw in the horror. Throw in the bodies, okay? Let the bodies mount up because it's D&D &D and it's supposed to be fun and it's supposed to be a little scary, right? So throwing in those fantastical elements are gonna be really, really nice. Now, I don't think there's anything left to add except for, let me throw in the fences here. If you're not sure where to put your fences, just have the fences line roads, just like your bushes. You can line roads with fences or with grass, bushes, whatever. I'm gonna go over the other elements to make sure that I have everything. I think I have everything. We can go ahead and turn off that evil tree now. But last bit, as always, I love to make roofs. Roofs are absolutely fantastic, and they're a great element to add to the map because I just love roof battles. Any regular to our stream knows that I always have to throw in some roof because roof combat is just awesome. Now I've chosen these kind of blue rooftops because I feel like it matches well with the water. And so it kind of keeping with this same color scheme, it's these browns, reds, these warmer colors, and then the blues and these greens as these kind of cooler colors. And so it kind of looks nice. So kind of this bluish roof. So that way, because there's so much warm, the crops, the dirt, all of those are such warm colors. It just, just seems wrong for me to use that same kind of warm kind of colors as the roofs. So the buildings pop out more by adding in that blue color to the roofs and it goes well with the river as well. When you're assembling your roofs, as always, you just want to piece them together. You, you have custom, we have uh, composite stamps that already exist. This piece right here is a composite stamp. It's already put together for you. And then I just went ahead and pieced together this other segment of the house with the modular pieces. If you're ever struggling with figuring out architecture or how you want the layout to be, that's what those references are there for, right? Remember, you, the buildings from Fantasy Regional, they look great. There are great buildings. You can easily replicate them. Just use them as a guide. If you're struggling with architecture, it's not too hard. So just take any kind of town, city, village building, put it up in the corner there as a guide, and then just try to put make the layout. Okay. 
Well, that is it for this stream. It's been awesome. Thank you so much, everyone. I've really appreciated it. This is a, I have really enjoyed this map. I think it's a lot of fun. This map uh, will officially be clonable. It's on my profile. I'll make this clonable uh, after the stream so that way you can use it for yourself. If you're confused on the operation of how this works, just look to the right panel and you'll notice that I've grouped every single thing. So if you're curious how to operate it, just click the group in the right panel. It's been locked, so you can't select anything on the map. It's been locked. Notice that there's this lock right here. Everything's been locked, so that way you don't accidentally select anything. So if you want to select anything on this map for your own personal use, just click these groups. Click that group, and everything inside the group will be available to change and to edit to what you see fit. Okay, so this map will be clonable after the stream. If you missed some of it, don't worry. We're also going to put some. Of, we're also going to put this on our YouTube channel for you to watch. And again, this map is totally clonable and available for you to use for whatever you want. Okay. Well, that concludes the stream. Just a reminder: next week we're doing modular buildings with watercolor cities. Let me go ahead and just zoom go out here real quick. I'm going to show you those examples again just so you can see them please let us let us know if you're if you haven't join our discord server and don't forget to go to the roles channel and to click the incarnator role when you go to our discord channel because that role is going to make give you access to every single channel okay but we're going to be making stuff like this in next week's stream so if you have any suggestions anything that you want me to make i do recommend not anything, not any buildings that we already have within watercolor cities. There's already a, there's already farms. There's already um, blacksmiths and all those other kind of things. So just make sure that your suggestions aren't buildings that we already have, and so that way we can kind of make something unique and different from the stock uh, stamps that we have. So you can go ahead and do that on Discord. You can reach out. You can DM me directly and just give me any suggestions that you have or just throw them in stream requests channel. It's up to you. I don't really mind, but just let us know if there's any kind of buildings that you excuse me, want to see made in next week's stream. Okay. And when that stream happens, I'll remind everyone as well. All right. Well, Hey, thank you everyone. Please stay safe and healthy. Thank you so much for joining me on this stream. I had a lot of fun looking forward to seeing you all next Wednesday, 3 PM PST for how to create modular buildings. And also we have a watercolor cities, how to create cities that's coming up this month too. So all of you out there who are like, ah, I need to make cities that's coming up. So don't worry. I'm excited for that one too. All right. Hey, thank you so much. Please stay safe and healthy. Merry map making. And I'll see you all next week. Thank you so much, everyone.